give it a little. All right, let's see if you guys can hear me now. Let's see. Can you hear me now? Let's see. Turn from this to that. Uh, T E Y. T E K. Let me see. Anybody? Anybody out there? Anybody can hear me? Let's see. Can anybody hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? If so, I'm going to try to start this over. Um, let's see. I'm alive right now. Let's see. Can I contact somebody? Alright. Let me see. Let's see. If you can hear me. Live video. Lip sync live. Let's see. Who's that talking? Well, can you hear me, Joan? Are you guys able to hear me now? Before I have to hear. If you can hear, put a comment on there. Let's see. Can you hear me? Let's see. Still no sound. Can you hear me, Tawanda? You can't hear me? Let me see. So, Tawanda. So, oh, Aaron said audio is good. So, you can hear me, Aaron, right now. You sure? Let's see. All right, Aaron. see audio is good correct thank you yes thank you i appreciate that so we had a problem earlier um i did a whole video this morning but there was no sound which is all right because god is still good it sits on the throne so i'm gonna go ahead and redo uh what i did this morning good so that way you guys can hear yes i appreciate that um so i'm gonna just back up and redo what I did this morning. And, you know, God is still working, so I ain't worried about it. Um, if we're just going to keep moving forward, I'm just going to redo it in the video. Um, going to go back and just, you know, play some worship music and for you guys to hear just some things, you know, that God said on my heart. Be where you, are. you know. And I'm going to try to set up my camera. A little bit better so you guys can see me. Come on, call me up the Lord's hand. I'm traveling. Oh, that that? That's better. Glory. There we go. I will do anything. So, good morning, everyone. Good morning for those who just joined in. Um, I, of course, I'm Elder Paulette. I did this this morning at 7, and the audio was not working, um, and I didn't have my phone next to me, of course, for not distractions, so <laughs> I didn't do that, um, and my friends were trying to tell me they couldn't hear me, but thankfully, Aaron said he can hear me, so I'm excited, and thank you for joining, thank you, Rhonda, for joining those else who are joining. Um, I'm going to try this again, and I open up, we just opened up with a song. And we were just singing some worship music. I don't know about you guys. I love Tasha Cobbs. She's definitely a good worshiper. It's a good music. Hope I'm not sure if you can hear the song. I'm going to pull it a little closer to my iPad. I think I'm going to have to use that from now on. But my laptop. My king. Wanna be where you are. Thank you, Jesus. I gotta be Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many people want to be where God is? You know, we have to figure out how to seek God, especially in this time that we are in. We need to figure out how to seek and how to see God. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. We got to be where God is. Amen. Thank you, Father. Gotta be where you are. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Gotta be where you are. My cup, Lord. He's a good holy for you. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirst in my soul. Hey, God. Bread of heaven. Yes, Jesus. Feed me to Thank you, Jesus. Feel my cup. Fill it up. And make me whole. Thank you, Father. So let us open up in a word of prayer. We're going to open up in a word of prayer. And get right into our lesson for this morning. Amen. So. All hearts and minds are clear. Dear Heavenly Father, first we give you thanks and we give you praise. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Father. We thank you for life. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you be with us on this morning. Father, help us to open our eyes, open our hearts, and open our minds to receive the word that we have you have for us on this morning, Father. Help us to unify together. Help us to love one another and work together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that down. All right. So I decided to do this um, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Um, I know it's almost 8 now. I'm redoing it because the last video that I just did and the people who were there, they were trying to tell me and I didn't realize you couldn't hear me. So I'm redoing this on my iPad and I'll probably use that again for um, future. I'm just going to try to do some encouragement for each other. My purpose of these videos and segments is for us to join together to have unity, to give one another, to encourage one another, and also to show the love of Christ. You know, through these times, we need encouragement. Through these times, we need to learn how to bond together. So I'm going to continue doing this all week. I ask that you, you know, send your comments. I ask that you send your prayer requests, share the video, and hopefully you guys are able to get something that God has for you. So this morning, just a little segment, little snort, short little thing I wanted to share with you guys about unity. Um, calling this an hour of unity because I want us to be able to unify together and to bond together, to come together. So we as humans, we have been used to doing things on our own. You know, we have been raised to get an education no matter how far you go with it and get a job in order to provide for yourself and your family. And we get the job in order to provide for ourselves and our family, but we keep our mind and our body healthy. However, you do this to make sure you maintain yourself what within society. Now, there's nothing wrong with those things, and this is how it's been the norm within our nation for a long time. However, what do we do now? Mm. My question here, beloved, is I want to know what do we do now? What do we do while we're in the chaos? What do we do when we can't go to work? What do we do when we can't see a movie? What do we do when we can't even go eat at a restaurant? Or what do we have to do when we have to teach our own children at home? What do we do now? For the things we took for granted, what is shut down? This morning, beloved, I feel God has given me the word that we need unity. I'm not talking about just unifying amongst those or like our family, but I mean unifying as a nation, coming together in a way to seek God only. Now, what does unify or unity mean? I'm glad that you asked. If you look in the dictionary, the word unify is the state of being united or joined as a whole. I'm going to say that again. If you look in the dictionary, unity is... The state of being united or joined as a whole, meaning that we that you have to have unity to be connected to something or to someone. 
Come on, beloved. Someone say amen with me. Now, my God, while you have been social distancing yourself, what have you been connecting to? Mm. I want you to think about that. While you have been social distancing yourself, they say we can't go out with 10 or more. We can't, you know, we go to a grocery store and you see people got gloves on. You see people got masks on. People don't even want to say good morning. People don't even want to say hi no more. You know, people are literally in a state of fear and a state of shock. So you wonder, beloved, I'm asking you this morning, you know, while we are sitting here in this social distancing time in our lives and in this era, what have you been connecting to? I'm not talking about your spouse or, or your children. I'm not talking about anything, but I'm talking about your spirit. What has your spirit been connecting to? What have you spiritually been connecting to? Mm, I'm going to let that marinate right there. Think about it. As we are social distancing and as the churches are closed, okay, the building is closed. Churches ain't closed because the church is in you, but the churches are closed and the malls are closed and the schools are closed. Why these buildings are closed spiritually, beloved, what have you been connecting to? Now, let's look at the scripture. Of course, I have a scripture for you guys. And we're going to come from Colossians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. And I'll be reading the NIV version. Again, we're going to come from Colossians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. And I'll be reading the NIV version. So, I'm going to read chapter 13. It says, Bear with me each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. I'm going to read that again. It says chapter 13, chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. It says, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. So here, the first scripture in chapter th uh, verse 13 is saying that we must forgive. Mm, I know people don't want to hear that, but the Lord is saying here that we must forgive, not just to say the words, but for in your spirit to believe that no matter what they did or how they treated you, you must forgive. Why? Because the Lord has forgiven you. I know we don't want to talk about it. I know sometimes it don't feel right, but think about it, beloved. What situation have you been in that God has forgiven you, that he wiped the slate clean, that you had a second chance or you had a fifth chance. You know, God has continued gave you chances. So beloved, I ask you this morning, what things have you been harvesting on or what things have you been holding that you need to what? Forgive. For some of you, you were living in a manner that was unpleasing to God. Now, Praise the Lord, I'm not judging you. I'm not saying that you was doing anything. I'm just saying, sometimes we know we were living ways that we should not be living. And I myself am a witness from that. So we were living in a manner that was unpleasing to God. And you thought you had all the time in the world to get your life together. Amen. Sweet, sweet. We always think, you know, I'm not going to read my word today because I'm going to read it later. Or I'm not going to be able to go to church this Sunday, but I'm going to go next Sunday. You know, we always make up all these excuses because we said, what? Well, we got to go to work. We got to take care of the kids. There's always a list going on. Now, we said we have all the time together to get in line with God. And now what? We're stuck in the house. You stuck and you can't go nowhere. You can't go grocery. You can go grocery shopping, but you can't go to the mall. You can't go to watch a movie. You can't go to that funeral, unfortunately, or you can't go to a wedding. You can't go to that party. What? You are stuck in the house. Now those things you wanted to do had to cease. Those things that you were doing, those things that you was getting it in, those things that you was having fun with, they had to cease. It wasn't even on your own doing, but God stopped those things from you doing them because they had to cease. What are you saying, Elder? I'm glad that you asked. This shutdown is a time for you, beloved, to repent and ask God for forgiveness. I know it sounds old school. I know it sounds like, oh, people keep saying that. Maybe somebody keeps telling you because you need to forgive, amen, or you haven't done that. It is time to work things out with those that you are harvesting hatred and anger towards and forgive. Do you not understand, beloved, that if you let things harvest, that means harvesting means it lives within you. When you see um, 
the farms and the fields, you know, they have to plow and harvest the dirt in order to get things to grow before they can plant the seed. That is the same thing that you could be doing on the inside, holding all that anger and that hatred. In. You could be harvesting those things on the inside so deep that God says, I want to come plant something, or I want to come give you life, or I want to come give you love, or I want to come give you a blessing. And he can't get past all the anger and the hatred because it built up and you're not forgiving. Forgiveness is what you have to do in order to what? Let go. Amen. This shutdown is a time for you, beloved, to repent and ask God. Some people say, you know what? I don't know how to forgive. Or some people say, I want to, but I'm not sure. So then ask God. It's that easy. You don't got to be all holy art than thou or you don't have to have no big prayer. All you got to do is just ask God to forgive. That's all you got to do. That's it. It's time to work things out with those that you are harvesting hatred for and anger towards to forgive. Remember, forgiveness is not about them, but it's about you. Come on, beloved. Someone say amen. Forgiveness is not about them, but it's about you. While you are shut down and shut in, God needs you to start a spiritual cleanse. That's what I'm talking about, beloved. What are you connected to? What is your spirit connected to? If you can't go nowhere, but maybe take a walk outside excuse me, go to the grocery store and that's all. What are you spiritually connected to? How are you cleansing your spirit? Yes, we have churches going on live everywhere. There's a, a prayer service here. There's a Bible study over here. There's no reason why you spiritually can't connect yourself to something or someone to get those things cleansed. I mean, removing those blinders or walls of hatred in order to allow God in. When you harvest anger and you harvest unforgiveness, it's like a wall. It's just like this. If I cover my face, you can't see me. That's the same way God can't see you. When you are harvesting those things and he can't see you, what do you think how he going to get in? You can't keep praying that God, I need a house. God, I need a car or God, I need a promotion. But you have anger towards something or someone and he can't even see you to give you the blessing. You have to be able to release that. Once you allow God in, the scripture said in Colossians chapter three that we read and verse 14 is what I want to look at. It says, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. It said, I'm going to read that again. Chapter three of Colossians verse 14 and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. What is God saying? That in spite of what they did to you and how things look right now, you, beloved, must put on love. Mm, I know that don't feel right, right? And you sitting there saying, wait a minute, God, you want me to forgive and then you want to love, want me to love them. That sounds crazy, right? Yeah, it might be a little crazy, but that's just how God works. Why? Because he forgave you and he still puts on love every day for you. How do I know he puts on love for you? You're watching this right now. You got woke up this morning. You opened your eyes. There's breath in your body. That's called love. That's called grace and mercy. In spite of what you might have done or in spite of how you have ignored God, God says, I still love you. I still forgive you. Those are the same things he wants us to do. If we claim to be Christ-like, we must walk in the way that Christ wants to walk. So in the scripture here, it's telling us to all these virtues to put on love. So I want to break that word down. Then, what does it mean to love? You know, what does love actually feel like? Some of us think we know it. Amen. Some of us think we got it together. But I really want to break it down. What is love? According to the dictionary, love is an intense feeling or a deep affection. That means the same way that you love your mother is the same way that we love our kids, even though right now they're getting on our last nerves. Amen. Sweet, sweet. That is the same way we love them is how you need to love others. This is how we're supposed to love one another. The scripture says in John 3, 16, which we all know for most of us, for God so loved the world, what? That he gave his only begotten son, that he so ever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The same way God loves us in spite of our mess mm, and what we have done 
is how we must love each other. God loves us in spite of anything. He loves us in spite of what we did. He loves us in spite of what's going on. I promise you, beloved, God loves you. If you sitting there watching this this morning and you think God don't love you, trust me that he does. You think what's going on in our nation means that God does not care? Trust me that he does. Let us understand in the biblical and in the scripture, things happen to the nations and to tribes each and every day or each and every year or each and every decade. Some of them were dedicated by God. Some of them were done by people that God said, go do this too. Best believe God is in control at all times. He knows what's all going on. But it comes up to us to say, okay, how are we going to trust God in the midst of this mess? How do you think the people or the children of Israel trust in God when they were captive in bondage, but then had Moses come to try to free them from captivity? And he told them to follow me, this man who stuttered, who didn't have to speak proper grammar. They left to follow Moses and then came against the Red Sea and still looked at this man like he was crazy. But then he had the staff to part the Red Sea. They had to have faith in God. It wasn't about Moses. It wasn't about his staff. It wasn't about what was going on. These people have been praying. They have been fasting. They be saying, God, show me a sign. God, send me away. God, I just want to be free. That was because of God. They had to trust in him. That way, beloved, we have to do the same thing. In this midst of chaos, we have to know how to what? Love each other and trust in God. This is how God is challenging us right now in this season. To love each other for that will bind us together in unity. Love brings us in unity. First, you, the forgiveness has to be shed for the love to come in. And then we have to be bound together in unity. As you are shut in and you are trying to figure out what is going on with our nation, take the time to seek God's face first. My first point, beloved, is take the time to seek God's face first. Take the time to forgive those folks for what they did or forgive that thing for what happened to you. Once you seek God's face, and some people say, I don't know how to pray, or some people say, I'm not a prayer warrior, or I'm not, I don't know what to say to God. It's so simple. All you need to do is just say, you know, Lord, show me what it looks like to forgive this person or show me what it looks like to feel you or show me what it looks like to love. Some people might even say, show me what it looks like to have you love me. Some people don't even know what God's love feels like. I promise you it's the most purest and good love that you can ever feel. Those are the things that we have to seek God for. And it's that simple. That's all you have to do. God says, come as you are. And have an open and willing heart to receive whatever he has for you. I promise, beloved, once you put yourself out there to God and be vulnerable, he will be able to give those things to you like never before. When you forgive, you feel better. It's like a weight lifted off of you because forgiveness can be heavy. Ha harvesting those feelings can feel heavy. You might be upset and don't even know. You might snap on someone and don't even know it. And you're sitting there looking like, Jesus, what's wrong with me? God says, I've been telling you to forgive. Or I've been telling you to let me in. Let me see how I can love you or let me show you that love. That is what that forgiveness is. In this midst of shut down and shut in, put God first. Stop making the excuses. There's no more distractions. God took them away. We can't say we got to go do this or we got to be here. Even some people's jobs, unfortunately, he has taken away and they can't go to work. So now it's like, okay, who else can you turn to in this turmoil? Turn to God. Take the time to fast. Take the time to pray. Take the time to actually get on your knees and seek God first. And then try to forgive and learn how to love. Show that love. If you take the time to learn from God how to practice love towards all and show love to all, all for once, once we do this as a nation, we can have unity. As a nation. I'm not talking about just love for your sister or your brother or your spouse, but I'm talking about for love as a nation. We have to be able to love our neighbors, those people you probably never even talked to that live right next to you or live across the street from you. Now it's time to show that love. You know, if we can, if you have the means, help people out. If people need some food or someone might be a nurse, have to go to work and they need someone to help watch their kids. You know, those are the type of things we can help with love. If you don't have the financial means to help, prayer is free. You can let someone know, you know, I'm so sorry for you and you're stuck in that situation, but you can pray. Say, I'll pray for you though. 
And I believe that in my heart that if you pray and you agree, then God will be there in the midst and help your situation. At this time, beloved, it's such a, a turmoil, strategic time that we have to love one another, that we have to unite together. But we also have to seek forgiveness. Seek God's face first for everything that we do. We cannot continue to just con put things off or continue to say, I'll get to it later or later is here. I promise you. As the scripture says, we are living in the last days. If you don't believe me, read Revelations. You understand me? In the Bible, it talks about these days. This is a time we have to unify together. Countries have to come together. Houses have to come together. Government has to come together. Everyone has to come together. Why? Because we are all affected by what is going on right now. This is why God has dropped this in my spirit to show unity. God has dropped this in my spirit. At three days a week, I'm going to come and I'm going to share what God has given me. And we're going to talk about it together. And if you have some insight, if you have some scriptures you want to share, if you have some comments or topics you want to talk about, drop me a, a comment on here. You can drop me something in my DM. I'm going to put my email out there. You can also email me and we can get this thing rolling. I'm trying to just encourage one another as well as I want you guys to encourage me to keep going. We don't know what each day might even look like. Every morning I wake up, I don't know what to expect. But I know every morning before I put my feet on the ground, I'm giving God thanks. I know every morning before you turn that news on, give God glory. Give God thanks that you made it just another day. That you made it just another year. I hope that touched you this morning. At this time, of course, I want to open up for any prayer requests or anything anybody would like for me to pray for on this morning. I know I had some prayer requests from a friend of mine that her granddaughter is deaf. Um, she moved out of her house and, you know, ran away with her boyfriend and she's just concerned about her and we're going to be praying for her. I have some friends who've lost some family members and they're not able to do funerals or bury uh, or a memorial. And that's a lot, you know, to not have that closure. So I'm praying for just comfort for them. I have some friends who are sick. Um, not Corona, but they're just sick, you know, sinuses or allergy season is going on. You have, I have, um, I'm a hospice chaplain. So I have patients in the nursing homes and patients where families can't see them or they can't go. And, you know, I'm have to call them every day and I'm trying to give them comfort and peace over the phone, but it's hard, you know, as well as we had to pray for our nurses and our doctors, you know, and the A's and the CNA's, the staff that still has to keep going out each and every day you know, risking their lives just to help someone else and to save someone else. So that's why I do this every three days a week, because not just to come together, unify, but also pray together. You know, there's power in prayer. The scripture says where two or three are gathered, you know, there he is in the midst. So there's definitely power in prayer. So if there's any prayer requests or anything anybody want to pray for, let me know at this time as I play some music in the background. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. All right. We can go ahead and pray out. Dear Heavenly Father, first we give you thanks. We give you praise. We thank you again for waking us up this morning, Father. We thank you for breathing breath in our lungs, Father. I ask right now in the name of Jesus, Father, that you cover every person that is watching, Father, that is listening, Father, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, Father. I'm asking for the oil to flow. From the inside out, like number four, give them healing in their bodies and their minds and their spirits, Father. You know those who are broken on the inside, Father. I ask that you be able to be there to lift them up, Father. Give them the peace that passes all understanding. Those who are seeking to forgive, those who are seeking to have love, Father, even show them how you love them. I pray, Father, on this morning that you be with us, Father, in the midst of this shutdown. I cancel out every doubt, every anxiety, every fear right now in the name of Jesus, Father. But I speak peace to them, Father, and peace in their lives, Father. I pray, Father, that you cover every home, Father, everyone who might be on their job, those who might be driving, Father, those whose kids is at home, Father. I ask right now in the name of Jesus, Father, cover the homes with the Lamb's blood on the doorpost, Father. Let your anointing flow, Father. Every negativity, everything that is in their home. I cancel it right out right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Bring positive energy. Bring uplifting spirits, Father. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, you have your way. As we continue to try to figure out day by day 
Help us unify together. Cover the doctors and the nurses, Father. Cover the staff, the aides and the CNAs, Father. Those who, the, the clerk, the front desk workers, the janitors, Father. Those who still have to go out to the hospitals and the, the ALFs, Father, in the nursing homes. Those who still have to do their job and, and endanger their lives each and every day, Father. Cover them, Father. Keep your angels camped around them, Father. Build them up. Give them restoration and strength like never before, Father. We pray for our nation as a whole, for our government. Give them the wisdom and the knowledge of care that they need, Father, to be able to govern us, to be able to work together and unify, Father. Help us to forgive ourselves. Help us to forgive others. Help us to love ourselves. Help us to love others, Father. And help us to unify together, Father. For we know we serve a God that is able. We know that you still sit on the throne, Father. We know we're still working it out for us. So we thank and praise you for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I see I have a shout out from Saya Nimli. We used to work at Walter Reed together. Hey, sister. Thank you for joining. I thank you all for joining. I thank you all for chiming in. Again, I'll be doing this on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 a.m. Um, this time I got the audio together. It was not working the last time. I'm going to post this video. I ask that you please share. I ask that you, you know, re-listen if you need to encourage yourself. I'm going to try to post it to YouTube. I'm not sure I do that yet. Praise the Lord. I'm going to figure it out. Amen. And we're just, I'm just going to keep encouraging you. Again, keep encouraging myself too. Please send out your comments, your prayer requests. If you want to, you can DM me. If you'd like, you can email me. If you want to just remain anonymous, which is fine. I still put your prayer out there. And let us unify together in this season. I thank you for joining me. I thank you for trusting the God that's in me to do this on this morning. And I pray that you guys have a blessed and amazing day. Even though we shut in, we're not shut out from God. Amen. So keep the faith and keep believing. Have a good morning.